you can see the future first in San Francisco. Here, the race towards artificial general intelligence, or AGI, has begun. What was once science fiction is now our imminent reality. Over the past year, the conversation has shifted dramatically from billion dollar superclusters to trillion dollar superclusters with a T. An unseen mobilization of industrial might is underway. Every power contract and voltage transformer has been secured over the next decade for a technological revolution. We are building machines that can think and reason. By 2025, these AI will outpace many college graduates. And by the end of the decade, we will achieve super intelligence. Machines smarter than any human, but with great power comes great peril. National security forces will be unleashed, reminiscent of the greatest mobilization in history. If we're lucky, it'll be an all out race with the other global superpowers. If we're unlucky, it'll be all out war. Leopold Ashenbringer brings us situational awareness the decade ahead a series that's going to trace the trajectory of ai today all the way up to super intelligence few understand what's about to hit them do you this may be the most important video i've ever made this may be the most important video you'll ever watch this may be really something that you don't truly understand the magnitude of the things that are changing around us. The fourth industrial revolution has started. This will be a longer video than usual. Um, I'm not going to use a whole bunch of video footage like I used in the intro. That was just to hook you. <laughs> Anyways, new shirt. Who would have thunk it? Anyways. So, um, I recorded a very long intro reading the intro. I re watched it back. It was fucking terrible. So instead, I'm going to give it to you piece by piece myself and summarize it. Cause there was, it, it, while it's really good to listen to it that way, it's very time consuming and I'm gonna lose you very quickly. You'll be gone just like my papa was. Please come back papa. But I will be popping up some charts and things from the paper. The paper pictured here. How do I fucking point that way? Right there. That paper. We're going to read that. We're going to go through it. We're not going to fucking read it. That's way too much. But I'm going to summarize it for you. Pull out the big quotes. Pull out the charts that are relevant. And show you where we're headed. The peril that could come from it. The steps we need to take to ensure at the very minimum that we're protected in some way. Um, there's a lot of big challenges ahead. We'll cover those at the end. But first, we are going to cover orders of magnitude. From GPT-2 to GPT-4 to AGI. Orders of magnitude. What are orders of magnitude? Well, when you go from 10 to 100, it's an order of magnitude. When you go from 100 to 1,000, it's an order of magnitude. Ba essentially, it's adding a zero to the end. Now, we're gonna, probably going to be the most brief on this topic because it's the most dense and boring, in my opinion. Now, let's get on to the graph. All right, so we'll start with a quote from Leopold Aschenbrenner. It's strikingly plausible that by 2027, models will be able to do the work of an AI engineer slash researcher. That doesn't require believing in sci-fi. It just requires believing in straight lines on a graph. Now, why this is important, is because at that point they can automate their own research. It could lead to an intelligence explosion very quickly if left unchecked. So in the graph, we have a line of base scale up of effective compute. Okay, these are estimates. And as you'll see, uh, GPT-2 was a preschooler, you know, down there at the bottom of the line. And right there, GPT-3 was an elementary student. It, it can read, can comprehend a little bit. And then right now where we're at now, we have GPT-4, which is considered a smart high schooler. So when the line continues upward, what exactly happens? Well, you get to expert level and then beyond to super intelligence. Now, assuming these trends keep going, that seems to be where we're headed. Here's a really simple way to look at it. Preschooler, elementary schooler, 
Smart high schooler. Question marks. Keeps going. Where does GPT-5, 6, and 7 fit there? All right, here's one that is relevant, I think. Okay, so just comparing GPT-3.5, that's 2022, to GPT-4, 2023, we went from around, you know, in the first one, it's the 10%, 10th percentile for the bar exam up to the 90th. For the LSAT, it's the, you know, the 40th to the 88th and, and so on and so forth. You can see it here. This is one year's advancements. This is incredibly fast. This is incredibly fast. This is just one year right here. It still struggles in calculus for some reason. It's extremely complex, so I kind of understand, but it still jumped up 48 per, uh, percentile points in one year. And it's absolutely killing the SAT. And the verbal GRE, whatever the fuck that is. Oh, okay, here. So here's an example of compute being scaled up. Base compute, you could barely tell this is a fucking dog. Looks like a dog out of my fucking nightmares, you know what I mean? That is a, that's a hellhound. 4X compute, that's a soft boy. It's a grainy image, but that's a soft boy. It's got a shadow and everything. Uh, 32 uh, compute, that, that's a good boy and he's real. He's a real boy. Uh, three of the main contributors to the um, advancements uh, from GPT-2 to GPT-4 is uh, the compute, um, algorithm efficiencies, that's just getting better at, um, you know, just algorithms getting more efficient. Unhobbling. Unhobbling gains is a little bit a uh, stranger one. But models uh, learn a lot from amazing raw capabilities, but they are sh they are hobbled in all sorts of dumb ways, limiting their practical value. With uh, similar algorithmic uh, improvements like reinforcement learning from human feedback and chain of thought tools and scaffolding, they become way smarter and not just huge dumbasses. At the same time, the cost of inference has dropped dramatically. Look at this graph here. Relative inference cost um, is just dropped uh, s steadily. Just a steady, it's a straight line as well. It's almost inverse. Efficiency seems to be doubling about every eight months, according to this graph here. All right, we'll take a look at our last graph. This is the last one for orders of magnitude. GPT-2 in 2019 is base, you know, it's zero. GPT-3 is at two orders of magnitude bigger, and it's an elementary student. GPT-4 is five magnitudes, orders of magnitudes larger, and it's a smart high schooler. Now, the only thing we did was increase the amount of data and compute, like we just scaled up. We scaled up. We did not teach it anything new. It learned that on its own. We're expected to get to 10 orders of magnitude by 2027. And we think, and experts think, that that may be enough for them to automate their own research. So I think we covered um, counting the orders of magnitude. It's a really bland one, but let's get on to the more interesting things. Let's go. From AGI to superintelligence, the intelligence explosion. Just like last time, we're going to start with a quote. Let an ultra-intelligent machine be defined as a machine that can far surpass all the intellectual activities of any man, however clever. An ultra-intelligent machine could design even better machines. There would then unquestionably be an intelligence explosion, and the intelligence of man would be left far behind. Thus, the first ultra-intelligent machine is the last invention that man need ever make. I.J. Good, 1965. In the popular imagination, the Cold War's terror often traces back to Los Alamos and the invention of the atomic bomb. But if you think the bomb was the ultimate game changer, think again. The real leap wasn't from no bomb to the bomb, but from the bomb to the super, the hydrogen bomb. Consider this, in the Tokyo air raids, hundreds of bombers dropped thousands of tons of conventional explosives on the city. 
Then, just a year later, Little Boy was dropped on Hiroshima, packing the same punch in a single devastating blow. But fast forward seven years, and Edward Teller's hydrogen bomb made the little boy look like a fucking firecracker, unleashing a thousand times more destructive power in a single device. The bomb was an efficient devastation. The super could annihilate entire countries. And so it will be with AI. Today's AI might impress you by mimicking human intelligence, but why would it stop there? There's no reason why it would stop there. For instance, AlphaGo. After learning from the best human players, they started playing the computer against itself and it became the absolute beast, the best, coming up with moves that no human could have ever imagined. So self-play against itself turned out to give it more abilities and insight than playing against humans. And I think that's what we can pick up from that. We already discussed how we're going to get to AGI, but there's no reason that we would stop there. There's a monetary incentive for everyone to keep going. Everyone's making money. They're making more money than they've ever made. Of course, they're going to keep going. We'll keep pushing and pushing, and soon AGI will become superhuman, vastly superhuman. Imagine an intelligence so vast and so different that it would make comparing us to ants trivial. We don't expect that the leap to superintelligence will be a very slow climb. As you can see from this graph, it could happen shockingly fast. Count in the human escalation right there. That's where AGI starts performing AI research itself. But by then we won't just have one AGI. We will have millions of AGI agents. Accelerating progress at a pace that is inhuman, incomprehensible. When I say that you can't comprehend it, here's a good example. This is an AI speed running Minecraft. What in the pig fucking shit is that? Dude, dude what the fuck is that? What is this? And then it just beats it. And it's done. What? Instead of just a few researchers in a lab, we'll have a hundred thousand researchers in a simulation. These researchers don't need to leave the office, make coffee, take a piss. They can just focus on advancing algorithms, compressing a decade's worth of human progress into a mere months. They could solve robotics, make unprecedented leaps in every field of science and technology, and trigger an industrial explosion of progress. This will be one of the most intense and transformative periods in human history. The gravity of this really can't be understated. It's absolutely an enormous shift for human civilization and it's ongoing. Now we're gonna move on to some of the issues that we could encounter in this inevitable race to AGI, the one that we didn't consent to but are now locked dead in. Racing to the trillion dollar cluster, techno-capitalist acceleration. The most extraordinary techno-capitalist acceleration is about to begin. As AI revenue grows rapidly, many trillions of dollars will be poured into AI research, GPUs, data centers, and power build-out for the U.S. The industrial mobilization, including increasing the U.S.'s electricity output by tens of percent, will be intense. Just as the Manhattan Project brought together the best minds and resources to achieve a single goal, the race to AGI requires unprecedented collaboration and investment. By 2028, AI training compute could demand as much electricity as several US states. AI investment is expected to reach 8 trillion by 2030, supporting the deployment of hundreds of millions of GPUs. It's not just about building the hardware, but also about building the infrastructure needed. We can compare this build out to the Apollo mission the Manhattan Project, or the internet infrastructure development. Meeting the energy demands of the AI clusters is gonna be the biggest problem we run into first. Scaling up electricity production, whether it's using renewables or traditional, is imperative. We must do that. Chip production is also gonna to have to go up. Building these AI clusters in democratic nations is vital for national security and global stability. We need the AI systems and clusters to be located in safe, democratic regions 
and out of the arms of dictators. We must do it with investment because the dictators can just force their people to mobilize to build these things. Which brings us to our next point. Lock down the labs. Security for AGI. The nation's leading AI labs are alarmingly lax in their approach to security. As it stands, we're practically handing AGI to the CCP on a silver platter. That's the Chinese Communist Party. Securing these secrets from state actor level threats is a direct, immense challenge. And we're not even close to prepared. Too many really fucking smart people take espionage too lightly. They act like it's not a big fucking deal. Even before the AGI race times, the CCP has been able to do the following. Zero click hack of any iPhone and Mac with just a phone number infiltrate air-gapped atomic weapons programs, modify Google source code, find dozens of zero days a year, spearfish major tech companies, I'm not sure what spearfish means, um, install key luggers on devices, insert trap doors in encryption schemes, steal information via electromagnetic emanations. What the fuck? Gain direct access to sensitive systems like nuclear power plants exfiltrate millions of security clearance files, compromise hardware supply chains, and slip malicious code into software updates. China engages in widespread industrial espionage. This is well known. That brings us to the threat model. The two things we need to protect are the model weights and the algorithmic secrets. An AI model is just a large file of numbers on a server. If stolen, all of our trillions of dollars, smartest minds, and decades of work become meaningless. Imagine if the Nazis had an exact duplicate of every atomic bomb made at Los Alamos. Keeping the model weight secure is going to be fucking critical. And we're nowhere near it. Secure is lax. We're Paul Blart, bro. We're Paul Blart in the AGI. What are we going to do against China? Russia. The second part, algorithmic improvements we discussed in orders of magnitude unhobbling chain of thought things of that sort they can steal those ideas too and they have um, they're just as important as stealing the weight our failure today will be irreversible soon in the next 12 to 24 months we will leak key agi breakthroughs to the ccp it'll be the national security establishment's single greatest regret before the decade is out adopting some industry level best practices would do pretty well like hedge funds use or even google but it will not be enough ccp increases its espionage every year so what we're really talking about is super security super security consists of the following and more Fully air-gapped data centers with physical security on par with secure military bases. Novel advances, that means new, in confidential compute and hardware encryption. Research personnel working from SCIFs. That's secure locations. Extreme personal vetting and regular integrity testing. Strong internal controls such as multi-key sign-off to run any code. Intense ongoing penetration testing by agencies like the NSA. They have to keep trying to red team this motherfucker. And we are not on track. When the world found out that the atomic bomb was possible, secrecy was a contentious issue. Some people thought that secrecy didn't belong in physics. Some people thought we shouldn't let dictators blow people the fuck up. The AGI situation should be pretty similar. We should take it just as serious as we took the nuclear secrets. We're developing the most powerful weapon that mankind has ever created. These secrets are literally the most important thing to the human civilization as a whole. These are the secrets that will determine the winner of World War III should it come. That will determine the future of the free world. And yet, AI lab safety is worse than probably some random military contractor making bolts. It's fucking madness. Literally nothing else we do matters if we don't fix this. That brings us directly into our next section, which is super alignment. Giving machines human values. Controlling AI systems far smarter than us is a problem we have not solved. Our AI techniques that we use today are going to break down tremendously as we cross the superhuman threshold. 
Without a solution, we face the threat of a super intelligent civilization that has shed its human shackles. An alien intelligence optimizing for goals we don't even understand. We would be unable to constrain these behaviors. The default trajectory looks like we're headed directly towards an unaligned AI. What failure looks like. Consider we train one with a long horizon reinforcement learning to run a business and make money. By default, it may well learn to lie, to commit fraud, to deceive, to hack, to seek power, and so on simply because these can be successful strategies to make money in the real world. What we want to add are sign constraints. Don't lie. Don't break the law. Don't be a piece of shit. Now here we come back to the fundamental issue of aligning super intelligent superhuman systems. We won't be able to understand what they are doing. And so we won't be able to notice and penalize their bad behavior with reinforcement learning from human feedback. The treacherous explosion. What makes the threat so dire is the likelihood of a rapidly recursive intelligence explosion. In a really short window, we may go from AIs that we have full control of to vastly uncontrollable alien intellects. This deprives us of the luxury of gradually adapting our alignment techniques through trial and error. Instead, we face something that could rapidly turn catastrophic. We will be out of the loop. Our concerns will not be theirs. They will have their own. Whatever arbitrary goal they have given themselves will be will be canon. We're going to need some extreme competence to get, to undertake this task and to effectively navigate it because the alternative is irrevocable. And yet, despite these dangers, Leopold is optimistic that alignment is technically solvable. But our only path forward is one of gradual empirical muddling leveraging our own machines against each other first we can extend the human supervised alignment techniques that work for current ai to cross the initial superhuman threshold through methods like oversight amplification representation editing expansive stress testing and nudging but we cannot solve all the way to super intelligence with these tricks alone we will need to bootstrap iteratively our aligning capability by turning the somewhat superhuman models into alignment models that we will use to align other models. Lastly, we need to embrace huge layers of last resort conservatism like air gapped firewalls, neutered capabilities, kill switches, and human sign off at each model transition and it must be embraced at the institutional level. There's simply no room for complacency or overconfidence. The killer of giants. The free world must prevail. The story of the human race is war. Except for brief and precarious interludes, there has never been peace in this world. And before history began, murderous strife was universal and unending. Winston Churchill, shall we all commit suicide? Superintelligence will be the most powerful technology and the most powerful weapon that mankind has ever created. It will give a military advantage comparable only to nuclear weapons. Dictators could use this to impose their will on other nations and have dramatic outcomes that we can't foresee. Every month that we are ahead is an extra layer of safety. We have to preserve a healthy lead in the democratic areas to make sure that authoritarians are not able to achieve superintelligence first. It is Leopold and my opinion that only American leadership can do the right thing in this case. The leaders of the free world must continue to lead the free world. Our generation often takes for granted that we lived in peace for so long and we were born with freedoms that our predecessors didn't have just a few hundred years ago. Now the biggest bottlenecks is going to be power. Let's take a look at this graph that shows American and Chinese power generation over so many years here. As you can see, while they used to only produce a fraction of what America does, now they produce well over twice as much as America. This power is going to be crucial for the data centers. So on raw power, China is already in the lead. We must outbuild China. 
Imagine if we had gone through the military technological developments of the 20th century in less than a decade. We'd have gone from horses and rifles and trenches to modern tank armies in a couple of years, to armadas of supersonic fighter jets and nuclear weapons and ICBMs a couple years after that, to stealth and precision that can knock out an enemy before they even know it, and you're there within another couple years after that. This is the situation we'll be facing with the advent of superintelligence. We'll see superhuman hacking that can cripple any enemy's military forces within minutes, robo-armies, autonomous drone swarms, but more importantly, completely new paradigms that we just can't comprehend. The invention of new WMDs with a thousand-fold increase in destructive power compared to World War II or other WMDs we're used to. And as we solve robotics, labor will become fully automated, enabling a broader industrial and economic explosion as well, as long as mass job displacement. Another problem for another video. Of course, we don't know the limits of science, and there's a lot of things that could cause friction and slow things down. But what that means we need is the project. I'm under no illusions about the government. Governments face all sorts of limitations and poor incentives and corruption. I'm a big believer in the American private sector, and I would almost never advocate for heavy government involvement in technology or industry, but there are no good options here. When technology becomes this important to national security, we will need the U.S. government. Perhaps the most important variable is simply whether the inevitable government project is competent. How will it be organized? How can we get it done? How will the checks and balances work? What does a sane chain of command look like? Barely any attention has been paid to this by the government. Almost all AI labs and governance politicking is a fucking sideshow. Fucking clown shoes. This is the ball game. By 2027-2028, the end game will be on. And by 2829, the intelligence explosion will be underway. By 2030, we will have summoned superintelligence in all its power and might. Whoever leads the project will face an immense challenge, building AGI quickly, putting the economy on a wartime footing, and fending off attacks from our enemies. They must manage millions of AGIs automating AI research, creating AI systems smarter than humans, and preventing rogue superintelligence from taking over. This will be a tense international situation. For those called to join this effort, it will be our duty to serve humanity. If we succeed, it will be the most important thing we ever do. The stakes are real. We all know this powerful quote from Oppenheimer after witnessing the first atomic blast. Now I have become death, the destroyer of worlds. That's what happens if we get it wrong. By the end of the decade, we will have built superintelligence. That's been the focus of this series. And for most people that I talk to, that's where the screen goes black. 2030s will be just as transformative as this, if not more. By then, the world will have been utterly, unrecognizably changed. A new world order will have been forged, but that's a story for another time. This isn't just another tech boom. Deep learning isn't going to hit a wall. The discourse in San Francisco has been polarized lately. On the one end are the doomers, They've been worried about AGI for years, but their fears are detached from reality. Claims of a 99% P doom and calls to indefinitely pause AI are not the way forward. On the other end are the EACs, who believe the AI progress must continue no matter what, at all costs. Beneath the surface level bravado, they're misguided. They deny the risks and reality of AGI, envisioning only harmless chatbots. This is not accelerationism, this is denial. The smartest people in the space have converged on a different perspective. AGI realism. There are three tenets to AGI realism. Superintelligence is a matter of national security. America must lead. The torch of liberty will not survive if China gets AGI first. We need to not fuck it up. That's the big one. Definitely don't do that. Definitely don't fuck it up. That's the, that's the one thing we don't want to do is fuck it up. At this point, you may think I'm crazy, but consider just for a moment, what if we are right? These are the people who invented and built this technology, and they believe the AGI will be developed this decade. Many of them take it very seriously that the road could play out how we described it. Reality will likely differ in a lot of important ways. We can't 
predict the future. The error bars are large and the margin for error is enormous. It's starting to feel very real. A few years ago, these ideas were absurd, abstract. Now they're visceral. You can feel them in your gut. We can see how the AGI will be built. It's no longer a theoretical. The scariest realization is that there's no crack team coming to handle this. The world is incredibly small and the live players are just a few folks desperately trying to keep everything from falling apart. Right now, there are perhaps only a few hundred people who realize what's about to hit us. The fate of the world rests on these people. Will the free world prevail? Will we tame super intelligence or will it tame us? Will humanity skirt self-destruction once again? The stakes are no less. If you enjoyed this conversation, please drop me a subscription. I worked very hard on this video, much harder than I work on many of them. So I would appreciate a like, a comment. If you would like to discuss this, feel free to join the Discord, hang out with me, come to the stream. It's not about AI, but you can come hang out. The next few years are gonna be rough. Maybe we can see it out together.